Blair Witch Project, the movie that launched a thousand found footage movies. Except not really. Blair Witch Project came out and was a phenomenon in 1999, but there wasn't really a slew of found footage movies until around 10 years later when Paranormal Activity and Cloverfield came out and were huge successes. And with a few exceptions, most found footage movies follow the formula or format of stuff like Paranormal Activity and Cloverfield. And my problem with found footage movies in general is they never really pull off that sense of realism that they're going for. It's always just too obvious that the sound is way too good, or that the camera is always looking exactly where it should be and is always perfectly in focus. For me, the original Blair Witch Project is a completely stripped down, visceral movie that se feels like it was made on a just nothing budget because it was. The original film was completely shot by three actors with two cameras, one a creepy black and white 16 millimeter. There was no script. All they had to go on was vague descriptions of their characters and what they should be feeling each day. Meanwhile, the director and the producers were all out in the woods uh, laying stuff out for them, making weird noises, and laying weird crap out of the side of their tent for just them to react to. And one of the reasons the original works so well, in my opinion, is that the actors are really conveying terror because they are actually kind of scared. They know that this is, they're filming a movie and then none of this is real, but at the same time, they are by themselves out in the woods and there are people messing with them. It's a completely different and experimental way to make a movie and the stuff they got out of it just ended up being so effective. So now, almost 17 years later, Adam Wingard, director of Your Next and The Guest, which is a fantastic movie, by the way, bring us the long-awaited sequel slash reboot it's basically like The Force Awakens for Blair Witch Project. I was excited for this movie back when it was just called Adam Wingard's The Woods because I'm a big fan of Adam Wingard and uh, when I found out he was doing a creepy horror movie in the woods, I was like, yes, absolutely. When it was announced that it was a sequel to The Blair Witch and I started to notice that it was all found footage and they were doing a lot more traditional looking scary stuff, I started to feel a little bit nervous, but I was still, I still went in this excited and, and ready to see something, ready to see Adam Wingard's twist on a sequel to The Blair Witch Project. First 20 minutes or so of this movie work very much like the original. There's lots of build up, there's lots of suspense, uh, there's a lot of great laying down of just spooky atmosphere, and I think all that stuff works really well. I definitely had that nervous, you know, movie feeling where I'm just like, oh, I just, I'm not, and that I'm a little nervous about, I know crap's gonna happen, but let's do this. It centers around the brother of a character from the first movie, and he wants to go back out into the woods because he thinks there might be a chance that his sister is still alive out there from footage that he found from locals who shot some stuff there. And it's just like, man, it's been, it's almost been 20 years. If she's still alive, she ain't there. And if she there, she ain't. About halfway through the movie, it starts to introduce some new and interesting elements for sure. I'll go into it a little bit more later in the video with spoilers. So for now, I'll just say that uh, it definitely ramps up and the last 20 minutes of this movie are just like constant stuff happening, constant freaky stuff in the woods, constant running around. This movie is very much inspired by more so first person haunted house video games, stuff like Slender Man, very much inspired by that, where all you can see is pretty much what your flashlight is shining on, especially towards the end of the movie where the characters are running around in a house. And this movie is basically, I feel, geared towards the people who didn't really like the original film, who thought, you know, they didn't show anything and that it was just a lot of nothing happening. This movie is basically like the answer to those people who wanted to see things. It shows you a lot of stuff. I suppose you could make the argument that for this big of a wide release, and for today's audiences who are used to found footage movies where you see like a face or something jump at the camera or creepy stuff happen, you kind of have to do that. You can't just make another found footage movie where you don't end up seeing anything. For me, ultimately though, that's why the first film works so well. Let me try to explain this. When I go to like a haunted house on Halloween, like, you know, like, a fun house on Halloween, like Universal Studios Horror Nights or whatever. I'm not really s terrified for my life or like, I'm not really deep down scared because I'm in a situation where I know that I won't be harmed. I know that it's just a fun ride. There's like a heightened sense of reality. I mean, 
when when I'm actually genuinely frightened, you know, people aren't jumping out of walls with fake knives and going boo. So I have this heightened sense of like, this is all fiction, this is too fantastical. My brain knows not to be too terrified. Whereas I've been out in the woods at night by myself, you know, and when you just experience that quiet and you know that you are alone in the dark and then you hear a noise and it could be anything. And that's the kind of stuff that just sends shivers down my spine. When I'm alone in my house, I'm just like, it's okay, it's okay. And that's what the first film for me does so well. There is not an overproduced soundtrack. There is just the sound that the people recording in the woods recorded. This movie has a lot of jump scares, a lot of fake jump scares, which can be really annoying. Some weird creature design stuff that, yeah, is, is spooky when you see it and it's kind of like, whoa, what the crap was that? But at the same time, there's no room for your imagination to fill in any blanks. But this movie is made for people who love roller coaster horror movies. I mean, the last 20 minutes of this movie, it just, just goes and it's nonstop and it's creepy situation after creepy situation, and it's definitely very entertaining. Like, it was never I was never bored or just straight up upset with this movie while I was watching it. I found this very entertaining, at least on the scale of found footage movies. Like, I genuinely don't like most found footage movies, but as this one goes, it's one of the better ones, I think. The main disappointment for me comes with my expectation of knowing this is directed by Adam Wingard and his crew. I kind of went in this expecting that he's, I just thought he's gonna do something that I won't see coming. Like he's gonna take this premise and he's gonna add something that will just make me go, I did not see that coming. And it doesn't happen. They do push the Blair Witch mythos further, a little too far in my opinion. I'll talk about that in just a minute. So if all you're expecting is to see a Blair Witch sequel that does that pushes the story a little bit further and but basically sticks to the original format of the movie then you'll probably like this okay but i can definitely see why critics aren't really loving this as much with coming with their expectations of what they've seen before honestly my theory is that people who that were calling this movie so great and amazing um initially from the preview or whatever uh, are people who hated the first movie <laughs> but if you're one of those people You'll probably like this, so check it out. Okay, so here on out, I'm going to talk about spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want any spoilers, stop watching right now. Here we go. They show the witch. Why did they, I wish they hadn't done that. You know, I get that there's a lot of people who really don't like the first movie because it's like, oh, you don't see anything. And you know, it's, uh, there's, there's just a bunch of people running around the woods screaming and what's, what's scary about that? They didn't even show the witch. Psh, psh. That's the whole point. For me, what's terrifying is the stuff that you don't see. For years, I've been watching the original Blair Witch Project and just imagining what is out in the woods. Like, was there a Blair Witch? What did, what did she look like? I wonder what they saw at the end of the film after they were, you know, taken and probably killed. What happened to them? I don't, I don't know. It's, my imagination is filling in the gaps and it's horrifying. That's why so many people thought in 1999 that this was real. I mean, obviously people who are more learned on film would know that a major studio would never release a snuff film. But again, it goes back to what I was saying about heightened sense of reality. Uh, your brain tricks you into thinking that this is a more realistic thing that you're watching because there are no special effects. You never see a creepy or ghostly image or something that is just obviously fake. I didn't like the look of the woods in this movie. I mean, I think that they they shot it during like the springtime and so the, the woods look a lot greener and lush and I think they did that specifically to distinguish themselves from the original film, to give it a different look. And I can understand that. I just don't think it works as well. I love the look of the woods in the original where it's obviously it's late October and there are, the trees are dead and it's obviously cold and there's just leaves on the ground. Like there's just no atmosphere to the woods in this movie. And it doesn't help that they're shooting on like these HD cameras, whereas in the original they're shooting on Half of it is shot on black and white 16 millimeter, which looks creepy as hell. And the, another nitpick, there's one of my favorite shots from the trailer of this movie where they're running through the woods and the woods actually do look really weird and atmospheric. That shot, not in the movie. 
So, uh, back to what I was saying about the movie going further too far with the Blair Witch mythos. Uh, we're basically, like, given a explanation or theory about what happened to the three people in the original film. It doesn't give us this theory directly, which I appreciate, but still it implanted it in my brain, and now it is there, and now there's nothing I can do to get rid of it. There's these two characters in this movie who uh, get separated from the group, and when they find the group again, they're like, we've been lost for five days, and it's only been one day for the, for the, for the big group. And that's a really cool idea. I like that the fact that the idea that, you know, whatever's in the woods is playing with time and making it longer for some people and, long and shorter for other people. And then one of those guys gets separated again and you don't see him again until the end of the film when they're running through the house. And when you see him again, he's got like this beard and he looks disgusting and it looks like it's been, you know, probably he's been by himself and lost for months. And he says like, you look just like I remember, which is, for me, it was the creepiest part of the entire movie. But then he says stuff like, I've become like Rustin Parr, and she only takes sacrifices, and you have to do what she tells you to do. So I took this as a reference to the first movie. Uh, one of the three disappears in the middle of the film, and then they find the house, and then they get attacked by someone. I took this as like a theory that the missing guy, Josh, like knocked them out and presented them as a sacrifice to the witch, which you know, at the end of the first film, you don't know what happened to them. There's this mystery, and so I don't like that now that there's somewhat of an explanation or a theory about what happened in the original film. It just, it just sucks all the creepiness and kind of the fun out of it. It's also just far too apparent to me that, you know, the people in this movie are acting, and uh, there just is never... I never really felt a sense of of terror for these people. I feel like you, there's, you know, there's more people in this one than there are in the original, so I feel like you get to know them less. They're also far too pretty, and I get that, you know, like, pretty much every movie now has to have beautiful people in it, or it's like, what's the point? But, uh, you know, the, the, the people in the original movie look like real people. Um, they don't look like pretty actors. Whew, so I've probably nitpicked enough. I'm sure no one else in the entire world is going to have as many little problems with this movie as I as much as I did. Uh, at least we got one good witch movie this year. Did you see the witch? That was great. I guess once they start making sequels to this movie and you know there's once we have like six Blair Witch movies, I'll get over it. <laughs> the fact that the first one is is now a little bit tainted for me. What'd you guys think of Blair Witch? And have you seen the guest yet? You should, because it's amazing and it's on Netflix. Am I freaking out a little too much about this one? Maybe. You don't have to say that. I just want to take this time to apologize to Adam Wingard. I really wanted to like your movie. And I'm sorry I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. I enjoyed it, you know, for what it was. I was just expecting a little bit more. I'm gonna get so many snarky comments. Please like the video and subscribe. Oh, yeah.